Kitty and I will be hosting this roundtable discussion about blackness, queerness, and our seat at the table. Help me welcome this delicious, grandiose ladies of substance. My sisters, hello. 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 Oh, stunning. Hello. Oh, money, 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 money. Well, sisters, I um, let, I'm just gonna jump right into it. Okay, I want to talk about black culture. I know we've everything we've been talking so far is like black culture, black culture. I want to talk about it more when it comes to cultural appropriation. I feel like with social media now, like back then, I mean, when it, when it came to our black culture and in, in all, like when I say pop, pop, like we talk about fashion, we talk about pop music or whatever, it was looked down upon, but yet still very borrowed. But now, even when you look at social media and everything now, a lot of people have more access to that. They yeah. have access to our culture. And so now they're taking and they're borrowing. I look at all of these reality shows and, and the slangs and the way they dress, and but not ever paying homage to where it all came from. Well, I would say about it? not ever paying homage to where it came from because I do think there's often a, well, not often, but there have been times where there's a reverence for the source material and people go, as they say in so-and-so, or as they say on Drag Race, uh -huh. or as they say in Paris is Burning, or as they uh -huh. say in, you know, la 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 um, that, so, but, but I will say that it is, it is not uncommon uh -huh. for people to, you know, go on TV and yes, queen and tongue pop and oh, crrr, and all that stuff without, uh, citing the source material. Yeah, I just feel like there's such a long-rooted history in appropriation from Black culture. Like, for instance, like, when I go to the Metropolitan Museum and I see things that they've taken from Africa, I see things that they've taken from Nubia, mm -hmm. and then you go mm -hmm. and you... Artifacts. Yes, mm -hmm. and then you go and you look at these pillars and then there's this white man Samuel something something 1800 going wow. and saying I'm putting my ownership yeah. on something that was never mine to begin with and then they go yeah I discovered it so then it gives me this ownership like I can take it and it can be mine and I feel like it's that entitlement that is one thing that we really need to discuss like there is a way I feel to very much so appreciate somebody's culture but so many times like Bob says there are times where you know they cite the source but mm -hmm. they don't we mm -hmm. think about artists like Elvis Presley mm -hmm. who is stealing music from black women mm -hmm. and like per per portraying it to be his own style Negro spirituals that then mm -hmm. were translated into country music and now you know black people have to now try and 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 rebrand themselves to get their foot in the door in country mm -hmm. music when it's yeah. still based in the roots yeah. of of what we created. It reminds me so. of my, my mom said when I was a kid, I would find five dollars in the house, and she would go, "You can't find five dollars in my house. Mm -hmm. You sold five dollars for me." Yeah. So <laughs> someone goes, so, so someone goes, "I found this. Yeah. Like you didn't, you stole, you didn't, you didn't discover this. Yeah. You stole this." And something you said that really, I, I don't know where I was, but I was in the town and I was in the meet and greet, and I got up to this guy and he just he got to me. He goes, "You you." speak so well, which does trigger me. I said, well, what do you mean by that? He goes, you just, you're like English, you speak English so well. And I said, well, it is my first and only language, so I, I should hope that I speak it well. And then he goes, no, 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 it's just, I'm saying like, you're clearly well educated. I said, well, I actually dropped out of college and I could have let him off the hook, but I said, but I chose not to. As the kids say, I chose violence that day. And, and, he, and I said, I think what you're trying to say is, you are shocked at how well I speak English for a black person. And he was like, What's no. He goes, no. And I said, you know, it, it, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Now, do you yeah. want this picture or are you buying a picture? Yeah. Yeah. Because even the same thing, when just to piggyback on what you talk about music, it's like, how is it okay for some, like a white person to 
be in the rap culture and mm-hmm. just embrace rap and and make so much money. But then it's so difficult for a black person to you know get Can into uh, get uh, country music, mm-hmm. you know. And I, and I, and I, it's almost like again there we go again with the double standard. Like you mm-hmm. you want what we have, but all of a sudden now we cannot have what you have. It's right? the fan base. Yeah. It's, it's, it is the fan base. I think that black people are conditioned <laughs> to accept white people in black spaces more so than Absolutely. white people are conditioned to accept the other way around. Yeah, and I also feel, I feel like there is a way that you can, you can uh, celebrate culture. You can celebrate all of that. I feel like, I mean, because I would love, love, I, I love, I mean, when you have traveled, like we all have, and we've gone and witnessed so much beauty in just, and richness in everything, with music, with, with, with fashion, with everything, you, there's a part of that that you want to be able to just celebrate, you know, and share with other people. That's why even when I came to America, I made sure that although I do all the other things that I do, like where I come from is really showcased in the platform I am because I know most people are not necessarily um, aware of what beauty is from where I come from. And so I think there's a way that you can celebrate it as long as you're able to, you know, say, hey, this is where it comes from and pay homage. And you can tell when people are trying to pay homage. Because I feel like that's where, I feel like that's where the issue of appropriation comes in the play because you have let's say specifically a white person that appropriates black culture who may <clears throat> who may have like a fan base or other people that watch them and they see that on them and don't know the source so then for them it, it becomes something that they're like oh as a white person this is something that I saw this other white person do not knowing where it came from and so then it becomes this kind of watered down version that doesn't even pay any sort of right. tribute from the roots that the it is, does it then diminish the value of the people who do it originally? No, it doesn't diminish it. But what I'm saying is I feel like what it does is it takes away from, well, I mean, that is the same as diminishing, but what it, it doesn't take away its value, but I feel like it takes away its story. And for Which black takes away people, its value. yeah, you know, for black people, I feel like so much of who we are is tied to our ancestry and what we've been able to pass down because of slavery, we had so much taken away from us. And we have been able to rebuild a culture and hold Mm -hmm. on to the little pieces that we had to the motherland just by sharing that with each Mm -hmm. other so that Mm -hmm. when an outsider comes, takes it, and then presents it to to their own as it's like their own idea, something that's coming from them, and that's what those people assume, then the true creators are left there, you know, without the credit. And I think that that is important. So, you know what, I guess I do feel like it does diminish the value when you yeah, don't get the opportunity uh-huh. to get the true credit that you deserve. Wait, I, okay, yeah. people, we are going to change up the conversation a little bit when we come back. If I could bring back one fashion style, it would be blue sparkly caftans. One thing that keeps me going when times are rough is prayer. This brings me down, like if I can just like, well, because we can go in and in and in. Culture. Drag culture. There's a big thing now online about cis women doing drag. Or oh, everybody now can do drag. And everybody can claim that they are drag queens or drag this or drag that. I am just, I'm going to throw it because I'm opening Pandora's box. Yes, you are. I'm opening Pandora's box. Mm-hmm. I want to know how everybody feels about this, where everybody now, even especially cisgender women, because it's a big thing even online, where they're like, oh, I'm a drag queen. And who are you well, to tell me? Can we first define drag? That right, okay, well, go let's ahead. Let's do it. I say, dr- I say drag is, I say drag is creating art and blurring the gender line. It's that simple. I feel like people can do drag just despite their where they're from, how they're raised, if they have a vagina, if they have a penis, if they're born with a vagina and identify with it, bit bop borp, cisgender, transgender, um, non-binary, you can do drag. It's not just for men to dress up in wigs. It doesn't have to be wigs. We have people like Kevin Aviance. I, I feel like it is honestly for everybody that has been negatively affected by the patriarchy. The ones that benefit from it, I'm more so like, because... For me, and many times when we think about like femininity and the way that the patriarchy looks at it and treats it, mm-hmm. I feel like for anyone who would be looked at as like a cisgendered um, man, the 
embracing their femininity is almost looked at as like treasonous, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like for cisgender women, a lot of times what they deal with is having to downplay their femininity to, you know, kind of like get away from the male gaze exactly. and be respected and not be like threatened. And I feel like drag allows them to really embrace their femininity mm-hmm. in a way that is like and really empowering. Power. Yeah. And so I do find it really beautiful that like cis women are finding a space in drag. I feel like the and, and, and look, I don't I'm not the type to gatekeep either, but I feel like the one part, the the one sub <laughs> the one <laughs> Here comes. would definitely <laughs> have to be the default, which is like the cis hetero male. Can I make the most controversial statement that we're ever gonna make on the show? And you can argue me down, I'm telling you, it's just true. No one wants to hear this. The most famous- I don't wanna hear it. (laughs) The most famous and successful drag queen in the world is Tyler Perry. What he's doing is drag. He's a That's fucking true. drag queen. Mm-hmm. He that is, is not a, true. He is a he's most, not a drag queen. He is a, what he's doing, queen. he is doing full drag. You know, I didn't say he's, front. He's, great, he's creating art and blurring the gender line and performing. That's the rules you set up. No, that's true. He's However, a drag queen. No, no, no. There's a difference between someone who is a drag queen. Well, he's doing drag. And I'll someone who way. is in drag. So I'm saying he's the, most, he's the world's most There's a difference. famous that would drag be like, artist. And I, own, I totally understand what you mean because I've never identified myself as a drag queen. No, I've never had an issue with people saying, oh, that's a drag queen because I'm like, okay, that's the lay term. Everybody understands that. But because of what we do and because of the different facets when it comes to my artistry and what I do, even if you take away the illusion and you take away the layer of what I wear, my artistry is still there. Still there. I'm, the still, I'm still a musician. I'm still a songwriter, I'm still a this, I'm still a that. And I think that one of the learning lessons we need to take away, you know, even from everybody watching out there, is that we should still be giving those credits as drag artists. If you want, yes, we happen to wear drag, but then we should not be called drag queens. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think that I prefer being called a drag performer or a performer that happens to wear drag. And that goes to every single one of you, in my opinion, about what you guys do, because there's so many facets of what you do, which is beyond the whole idea idea of what we wear and what all of this is. Beautiful people, we have a lot more to cover, but guess what? We will be right back. Three words, um, fierce, um, tenacious, and um, backbone. I mean, the drag community is the backbone of the queer community. The first time that I was in drag was Halloween. Um, uh, I went to a party dressed as Tyra Banks, and, um, yeah, everyone lived for me. (laughs) My question I want to find out, though, sis, which I'll start with you, is that do you feel that the foundation and the culture of drag is being lost in this time? I can't wait to see I feel like drag has evolved a lot more than what it was when we, even before any of us became famous, when we were just at the bar and you, there was the, you know, the legendary house mother drag queen and she puts people in drag, you know, and I feel like it was that drag family. You had like, you're the oldest one here, so you may have taught me how to. Uh, oh, 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 she tried it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she tried uh, Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah, seasoned. The, 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 the seasoned. 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 <laughs> extra pepperoni. <laughs> extra paprika. Extra paprika. Extra paprika. Extra paprika. Extra garlic. 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 However, I mean, like, in that where I needed you before to mm-hmm. teach me how to do those things, mm-hmm. I don't necessarily need you or the queen person because... What is going on here? Wait a minute, wait I'm a waiting, minute. I'm, I'm gasping, but I'm waiting. The reality is we have people like Blue Hydrangea and Aquaria who they grew up watching, so they got to have digital, like, visual educations and they'll take a photo. And Aquaria goes, I would take a photo and then I would face tune it to where I wanted it to be and then the next time I would go and I would try to recreate what I did. Mm -hmm. So I don't know necessarily is the foundation lost. I think the foundation has been built and the evolution of the building is now being changed. So there is a thing, and I understand this, 
wanting people to struggle as much as you struggled to appreciate what you have, in my opinion, is strange. You're like, yeah, you struggle to get it, but everyone doesn't have to have the, what happened to like, I don't want my kid to have to struggle the way I did. Uh So as we, as we reach queer liberation, they will not know. Mm. Let me tell you right now, Lady Bunny did a show downtown at the Stonewall, and she did this. She did this whole song. She where she did, but I'm here, and it was supposed to be funny, but it actually got really emotional. She was like, "I remember just leaving the bar and getting like, should I wear these big wigs? Because people were throwing beer bottles at my head, and and I don't want that struggle. Yeah. And I'm and I'm glad I don't have it. I'm sorry that Lady Bunny ever had to go. I'm sorry that Photo the Bars that Kevin Aviance got attacked and had to go on Tyra Banks and talk about it. I hate that all those things happen, but I am also so grateful that I do not have to do that. So yeah. is it, so we can still have the same foundation without having the strong... No, Wait, no. let me answer that. La, 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 la. Wait, let me answer that. Let go me ahead. answer that. Go ahead. I, I, you, yes, yes, that's She's true. also season two. So. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, you're right. We people people we do recognize that older people, people who are more experienced, will be like, y'all kids don't recognize. And I really do think that that is because there is a certain flippantness and a lack of appreciation and sort of a, uh, um, a, an assumption that you you know, as young folks. I'm the first one who ever created the color this or the color that, and no, you didn't invent that. But they're young. Like, that's fine. Sure. No, that's fine. But you know, there is there. There definitely seems to be. It, there seems to be, and I don't really know, but there seems to be. Ironically, as, as much as we have access to things like the internet and Google and all these different histories and stories that are accessible literally at our fingertips, you know, it's ironic that these folks don't know what their history is mm-hmm. and don't know that a lot of the connections where mm-hmm. things came from. And we see it just by example in the drag race fandom mm-hmm. that someone from season 10, 11, 12 will do something, and then season 14 hypothetically mm-hmm. comes out, and they'll be like, oh, you're doing what, you're doing what mm-hmm. season, you're, you're the season 12 girl mm-hmm. of season 14. Mm-hmm. No, that girl, there's a there's a much further drag history yeah. than just that season. Yeah. And these kids don't even go back I, before I, that. But what I, I realize is we didn't go, the same thing happened to us. We didn't, no, no, true. that's not true. Hi, beautiful people. Okay, we have a lot more to cover, but guess what? We will be right black. Do I have a celebrity crush? No, I eat. Oh, I love food. (laughs) Nobody is saying, because we know that our um, our mothers and ancestors before us, you know, had to work so hard and go through hurdles to, for us to be able to walk the kind of path we're walking right now. But there's something about knowing what that history was for us to be able to even appreciate, you know, what that is now. So nobody's saying that, oh, you should go through that experience. But there's a girl, girl I, we go to the bars and uh-huh. have and just walk. You would be, it's so disheartening to see how even the young ones treat the, se- the, the seasoned season girl. Yeah. I've seen it so and much. I, and, and we're not saying that, hey, bow down and worship no. us or whatever, but there is something about even the, 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 the mothers that are alive that we can show some appreciation for what that I, is, and that is not even I in truly, the culture anymore. I truly feel like it, it, that is very important for those lived experiences, and, and I don't think that anybody should have to struggle in their art, and I feel like it's important that we try to remove trauma from the foundation Mm -hmm. of this experience Mm -hmm. and celebrate it for the joy that it brings. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about, you know, a lot of the younger, uh, uh, because I didn't have a traditional drag mom. Mm -hmm. I learned from YouTube, Mm -hmm. but you know, we're saying that we're forgetting, we're eliminating (laughs) those people, but that person taught me through YouTube. That, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. was my Foundation. drag mother mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in that moment. Mm-hmm. But still, even after that, it does not change the lived experiences that I had mm-hmm. learning from trans women who had been doing drag for decades. decades. Yes. Because mm-hmm. it is something, mm-hmm. there's something to be said about that human, in-person learning experience mm-hmm. that makes 
your art that much more enriched. There, there are things, and when it comes to drag, there are things you're going to learn from just being with the locals and being those with those who have been doing so much that you would never learn from the internet. I mean, I was, YouTube, I was from the club. What are there things that I have been able to survive 20 years, not from YouTube, we didn't have, of course, you know, we didn't have the social medias and all that, but it was from I that foundation that I got from like my mama Tommy you Ross also and know, all those no, And not everyone has that opportunity. Not everyone, some people are still living. But, they are, but, but, they are, but what I'm also saying clubs. is that there's some people that feel that because they can go on social media and get access to those things or how to wear makeup or how to sew or whatever, then everything else behind that or other than that does not even matter. So it's the willingness to want to know because those people are still existing now that can still tell you what the history yeah, is. I feel like, yes, there is a dissonance between the younger generation and the older one. I mean, I, I feel that the HIV and AIDS epidemic is a big part of that for its, Girl. like, it went through and just because slaughtered uh, our, Girl. like, family. And so there's that gap. And so I will say that a lot of the freedom that a lot of the younger ones have now, it's, like, very much like Bob said, I, I don't know that. I'm just free and I'm just here. And I feel like when you're a queer individual growing up with YouTube, the only queer thing you can do, you can go to the club, so you just practice your makeup at home and da 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 and then when you finally can go out, you go out and you feel fierce and whatever, so I feel like there's, like, needs to be grace on some hand, like, yes, little mama, you feel fierce, not this, that, and the third, mm -hmm. you know, your makeup looks great, but your stage presence sucks, you know <laughs> what I mean? You might want to take a few little dance lessons. Mm. That might need to come from someone older, but I feel like the grace just needs to be there for them to just kind of like... I think that, you know, we have to have these conversations. Sometimes they might be a little uncomfortable, but it is important to actually have them. And we can agree to disagree, but still love, love, love each other. We would love to stay here, but we have to go. Beautiful people, we are your queens. We are your fighters. We are your cheerleaders. And we, like Monique says, let's give each other some grace. We have to go. We love you all. Take some time to celebrate yourself. Give yourself permission to love who you are and know that you're special and you belong. Thank you all and have a wonderful whatever it is. Good night, good morning, good afternoon. Bye. Bye. Bye, on the track. It's gone flat. I define job but no define stat. If you don't understand, fall back. Chasing the bank, not a man. I want it all. Yeah, that's the plan. I have it all. Yeah, if I can. Music to my ears, just like a band. Banjo, 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 banjo. Said you wanna play me like a banjo, banjo. Pull my strings like a banjo, banjo. Hold on tight like a handle. You wanna play me like a banjo, banjo. Pull my strings like a banjo, banjo. Hold on tight like a handle. And if you see me on fire, then I know. Banjo, 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 banjo. Said you wanna play me like a banjo, banjo. Pull my strings like a banjo, banjo.